Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to the next Lunch and Learn segment. Uh, I'm Dustin Kane, and on this with me is Chris Gramlich. How you doing, Chris? Good, Dustin. Thank you. Yeah, both Chris and I are uh, account executives at Solozo, and we're also uh, sellers as well on Amazon. We've been experienced sellers for many years. And just to be clear, we did not communicate about this hat issue. This was this is right. Well, out of nowhere. Uh, great minds do think alike, and uh, today's topic is sports and fitness. Uh, so we wanted to make sure that we were representing uh, our Super Bowl champion, Kansas City Chiefs. Solozo, uh, <laughs> uh, our whole team is based out of Kansas City, so it is, uh, it's been quite a year uh, for the Chiefs, and we were super excited about the Super Bowl. So anyway, uh, today, this call, the, the, purpo or the purpose of this um, demo is to go over some challenges, some do's and don'ts, some tips, things to watch for uh, when selling in the sports and fitness category. Uh, so we're going to definitely cover all of those. And you're also going to want to stick around to the end of this because we have a, an exciting discount offer for you. Uh, so we'll have a discount code that you can use um, when you sign up for Solozo. So stick around for that. And also, if you have any questions, uh, please go ahead and type those into the, uh, to the chat. And we'll, we'll get to those uh, at the end of this. We'll, we'll go over some questions. So let's dig in, Chris. Um, let's go ahead and first, do you want to let everybody know uh, just a little bit more about Solozo, who we are, what we do? For sure. Yeah, so we're a, we're a software pro provider for Amazon sellers uh, that want to like automate their Amazon PPC, they want to know their financials better. Uh, we have a built-in repricer for those that do wholesaling uh, or retail arbitrage. Um, so we're just a growth tool platform for sellers. Um, our main tool is the automation of PPC. Uh, so if anybody's trying to do this manually, it can get very tedious, especially when you're trying to scale your business. Mm -hmm. So our objective is to take that out of your hands and you can focus on sourcing products or all that other stuff that comes with being a seller on Amazon. And then we will optimize and automate your ads daily. Uh, based on a target a cost that you can put into the system. So you can still do some manual stuff inside there, uh, inside the app. Uh, but a lot of the heavy lifting, like a daily bit adjustments, negative keywords, transfer keywords, uh, there's day parting feature. We, we automate that so that you can focus on your business and try to get new products in and, and try to scale it up that way. So that's kind of what we do. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I like to tell people also, um, you know, it, it's, getting harder and harder to be on Amazon and be ranked high on Amazon without pay-per-click uh, mm -hmm. pay -click advertising. I mean, it's just, it's the, sort of the nature of Amazon now. It is a pay-to-play platform uh, in a lot of ways. And so optimize, our PPC optimization is just a huge part of growing your business on Amazon. And like Chris said, yeah, the, the ability to, uh, to have a tool that takes care of that for you uh, allows you to go ahead and do all the things like we're gonna be talking about and looking at what kind of products are, are good to be uh, sourcing for this category. For sure. So, all right, <clears throat> let's uh, go ahead and move on and let's talk now about a little bit about the uh, marketplace snapshot of sports and fitness. Um, it, it's a pretty large uh, category. There's a lot that goes into it. Apparel, like all this that Chris and I have on our Chiefs <laughs> here, <laughs> this would be in the uh, sports and fitness uh, category, but then it goes into everything, all the um, all the different sports equipment, um, running shoes, uh, just fitness, yoga, all of that, camping, hiking, it's all in uh, sports and fitness. And sometimes Amazon calls it sports and outdoors uh, as well on their category. But you can see that the just the apparel alone is a $168 billion uh, category. I mean, it's massive. We wanna make sure we're able to get a little slice of that pie. Um, and you can see there's a 5% year over year growth in this category on Amazon. Um, and just to take a real, I mean, in 2016, four years ago, Amazon was already seeing four times uh, growth in this category. I can assure you it's grown substantially since 2016. Um, but it is, a, it is a large, large marketplace. All right, let's go ahead and do this. Chris, you wanna touch on what's all in this category? Yeah, so this, this is a large one. This has a lot of different subcategories. 
uh, within the main category of sports and fitness. So athletic clothing, exercising, hunting and fishing, sports, golf, all the all the team sports, uh, collectibles, all this kind of fits in and under one uh, umbrella of sports and fitness. So this is why the numbers are so large. Uh, there's a lot of different uh, sub niches sellers can get into. Um, and then from there, if they find a good product, they're able to find uh, other products within these categories and they can kind of branch off and like make a brand within the sports and fitness uh, category overall. Mm -hmm. um, so this, this has a lot of product research opportunity in it. Uh, you can, you know, niche down and find something and be like, be the brand of the golf category if you want it to be, or, or be the hunting and fishing category and sell fishing lures or something. But mm -hmm. uh, this is a good way to start and you can really niche down and, and find something that you're passionate about and, and you know, source a lot of products within these categories. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's now scroll down here and let's dig into some challenges. So uh, I'll touch on one, just the size of this, the size of this category, there, there's a lot of competition and there's interesting competition in this category because you have gigantic brands. You've got Nike, Adidas, you've got all those uh, brands that just, you know, people are going and actually searching for them. So, and in, in some ways uh, competing against them uh, can be difficult in other ways, which we'll talk about. There's, there's opportunities uh, to be able to compete head to head with some of these, um, these large brands. Uh, the other issue on here, a lot of times the challenge is, uh, say for example, all this, this chief stuff, this is all licensed. If, you, if you're not licensed to sell like sports teams, college teams, so that you absolutely do not want to be uh, attempting it. Now, if you do have licenses for them, uh, Amazon can be a great, great place uh, for you. Uh, so yeah, those, those popular brands, the competition, those can be some challenges that you'd have to navigate. Uh, reviews is another big challenge in this category. Um, a lot of these, especially with big brands, they've been around for years and years and years on Amazon and they've got thousands and thousands of reviews. Uh, and that uh, reviews are something that customers on Amazon really look at. It's, it's fairly difficult to overcome a, a large review gap for a similar product um, on Amazon. Um, and then lastly, one of the challenges is seasonality. Uh, sports and fitness in, in a lot of it, especially the workout stuff, has interesting seasonality. January is huge, huge for working out, uh, for workout equipment, all that kind of stuff. So uh, we'll be touching on that as well. But those are those are just some of the, the broad challenges uh, in this category. And I bet I bet during this whole pandemic that we're going through, people in this category probably saw a huge spike in like February or March, early March. And yeah, probably sold a ton of product because no one was going to the gym. People were staying home. So they needed to get equipment, dumbbells, resistance bands. Yeah, all that kind of stuff was probably being sold like crazy. So you got to be ready for stuff. Uh, you know, you got to be ready for that that spike. Uh, mm -hmm. Those who had stock, they they benefited. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And and full disclosure, this is a this is a category I have a lot of experience in personally. Uh, I've sold in this category a lot. And yes, uh, this last couple months have been really interesting. Um, and just a bunch of we can even go into like inventory challenges. But hopefully, this is a uh, this is a once in a lifetime scenario we're, we're dealing with now with those, uh, with the, with the virus, but this, um, yeah, there, there's lots of, there's lots of opportunity on here on this, uh, even though there are some challenges. Um, so now let's, uh, let's talk about some of the things that we, we want to do. Chris, you want to talk about some good things to do, uh, for this category? Yeah, for sure. So, uh, high quality photos. Uh, we've talked about this in a few other, uh, webinars we've done but photos tell the story of the product. Uh, so you wanna be able to you know, invest in these, do some lifestyle photos, show how the product works, uh, really tell your brand story within your photos because that's probably where the people looked at the most. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, reading descriptions, reading bullet points doesn't really happen much anymore. Those are really good for like indexing your product on Amazon and adding keywords too, but photos and your titles need to be really, really uh, optimize and you need to invest in those. Um, another one you can do is you can cross promote. So let's say you have uh, different product offerings that you that you work with, or uh, you sell jump rope and a uh, resistance band. 
can go well with that. Maybe you can do a uh, product targeting uh, campaign on one of those products and, and kind of get it bundled together in a frequently bought together section. So being able to cross promote products is super powerful in this. Um, and then you got to be ready for January. Uh, as soon as the holiday is over, uh, you're going to see a big spike in sales in that January month. Uh, people are going to start trying to buy, uh, you know, products for them for the working out and working out of home. Uh, so those are, but that's a nice little incentive coming off the holiday and then you got the January spike. So that's a good, that's a good little bonus to have to start the year. Yeah. And touching on that, what's interesting in this category, um, in my experience, you get that big fourth quarter bump because of Christmas. So everyone's buying all the presents for everybody. Yeah. And the, this is this is the one category I feel like, and there, there might be others that, that I don't know of, but that bump then in January, it keeps going up. So if you've wow. just set your inventory for, um, for just Q4 or what you think you're going to sell in Q4, you're going to be out, sold out when everybody's buying again the one of the biggest uh times and as i can assure you everyone everyone just got an amazon gift card for christmas and then they've just committed to their uh new year's resolution and they're buying uh fitness stuff so what, what would you recommend like if someone is in fourth quarter do two shipments do like one that lands in october and then one that lands at the end of december or something like that yeah absolutely uh you're you're gonna because that build up, that Q4 build up, you know, starts mid mid November ish, to where you start getting that big big push towards the Christmas, uh, and you're gonna you're gonna want to have um, a, be able to resupply right after Christmas uh, to, to account for that January. So yeah, you want to you want to count for that, um, and I learned that the hard way. Uh, you know, the, every almost everybody tells you you know prepare for Q4. And, but don't make sure you don't have just tons of stock in the warehouse, you know, after Q4, yeah. you know, warehouse fees, not in this category. Now this category is broad. So we're not talking about everything in this category, but we're definitely talking about anything that's, you know, workout related, um, you know, diet related, anything like that, where it's about around the new year's resolutions people are making. Um, you definitely want to make sure that you have inventory uh, for Q4. Another thing to touch on in that cross promoting uh, one good strategy is let's say you've got uh, a yoga mat that you sell and you've also uh, now launched some yoga blocks offering a coupon code on that yoga mat where if you know if they buy the yoga blocks they get 20% off or whatever is a great way to cross promote and you can set that up in your coupons uh, and when you set that up in your coupons it actually shows on the listing you know you can if you buy this product uh, you can get a 20% off the next this other product. And it says that right on there. And it's a great way to, to cross most, especially if you have a listing that gets traffic and you've got a new product that doesn't get traffic. You can generate a lot of sales um, that way. And this so is, are, this is something like Slozo Connect can help out with. And we'll probably touch base on that. Absolutely. Yeah, we will. We'll, we'll touch on Slozo Connect um, absolutely as well. Um, and, and this is a good category for Slozo Connect. It, essentially a slows a connect, which we'll, we'll go over a little bit more, but it helps. Uh, we facilitate product inserts that go into uh, your products that um, get your, get your clients to get in contact with you either for a warranty or for a coupon, which would help that cross promotion as well. And not only do you get to be able to cross promote with it, but you also get to um, start gathering customer data, customer information. So you can reach out to promote, um, more to them. So we'll touch on that a little bit more. But one other thing I want to talk about, we don't have it here. Uh, can't believe we didn't put it in the dues here, but you have to have a PPC strategy for this, for this category. And that's where, that's where we can really connect. And by the way, you can, we highly encourage you to reach out to either Chris or I, you can go to solozo.com and you can book a time um, to do a live demo with us where we can talk about your business and some strategies for you and walk you through Solozo and what we can do. Uh, to help you set up that PPC strategy. But that is uh, critical. You have to have that uh, pay-per-click strategy uh, ready, ready to go. Um, all right, so Chris, let's talk about uh, some don'ts. You wanna touch on the first couple of these as well? Yeah, so don't make false claims. Don't, don't steal photos. And, and then again, don't order too much inventory. You wanna have enough for the, you know, the, the busy season of seasonality for your product, but you don't wanna get stuck with too much. Mm -hmm. um, so don't make false claims. Don't say your product is something that it's not. 
uh, don't try to get an endorser or don't steal an endorser's photo and add it uh, to your to your listing. Um, and then don't steal photos. Like create your own photos. There's plenty of ways out there to do this. Um, you can get on your local uh, you know Facebook group and try to get somebody to take a photo for you. Or uh, there, there's an app called Thumbtack that you can contact and, and get a photographer and they can take photos with you. Um, I mean, there's, there's a lot of, you gotta be creative here. So there's a lot of different things you can do. Um, and then don't order too much inventory. You don't want to be stuck with too much of something. Uh, so when you're launching a new product, I'm a big fan of getting small units first, test it out, do a little bit of PPC on it, see how it works. If it's something you want to continue with and you see a lot of traction and you can get in there and, and you know, get a little slice of the pie, then you can go ahead with the secondary order and, and make that your large <laughs> order um, and invest more into that second order. So test first uh, and then invest in the inventory second. Um, that's kind of my strategy on, on that as, as, as far as like launching new products. You want to make sure it's going to be something you're going to do long term on that. Absolutely. And and that, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because with just a second ago, we we're like, make sure you have enough inventory. Yeah, no. Make sure you don't have, but it's that's critical. I mean, you can you can mess up your cash flow. You can mess up. Uh, you can be stuck with a bunch of warehousing fees, uh, and you could be stuck with uh, being out of inventory, which is ter you don't want to be out of inventory. But like Chris said, you know, in the beginning, building your building your way up is the right way to go uh, by slowly increasing your order size uh, after proof of concept. Once once you decide it's seen that it's worked. Um, but then over time, you'll, you'll get to understand the way that your, your product, uh, the way, the way the ups and downs of sales go, um, over time as you do it. But, uh, yeah, just cause the, the main, I've done both. I wasn't ready for Q4 in January and I ran out of inventory and then I bought way too much, uh, you know, like yeah. in February thinking that's going to continue and been stuck with, uh, with warehousing fees. So there's, there's a lot you can, you want to just, just be aware of, of the, your inventory situation. And, and you can work with your supplier here. Like, uh, you know, Hey, we're going to, we're going to do a 5,000 or unit order, but we want to start out with maybe a hundred or 500 first as a test, just so your supplier knows you're serious or, or you, you want more inventory in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, so test that, that first 500, you'll get a good price because you've already told your supplier you're going to eventually do 5,000 units. So mm -hmm. now they're going to give you better pricing on 5,000 or even 10,000 units. Whereas if you would told them you were just going to do a thousand units, your pricing may not be as good. So telling them up front that, Hey, this could be a product that we're going to invest long-term 5,000 plus units. You might be able to avoid some of this where you're running out of inventory or you order too much inventory. Your supplier can prepare so you can, you know, have separate orders, maybe have a thousand units that land at one time a year, and then you can bring in 3000 for the fourth quarter and another, another thousand in January, just kind of like figure all that out with your supplier ahead of time. Uh, you know, that's, that's why it's important to do like a test first. And then, you know, if it's something you want to scale up, your supplier is ready for it. Right. Exactly. That's good info, Chris. Um, yeah. All right. So let's talk about some, <clears throat> some good tips for, for this category. Uh, the first one, influencers. In my opinion, this is hands down the best strategy other than pay-per-click uh, on Amazon. Pay-per-click is, is the most direct and you get the best data and it, and it works as, as, it, as you optimize it. Uh, but influencers, especially in the product launch phase, um, it, there, there are a million uh, fitness instructors that have their own Instagram channels, YouTube channels, and they're constantly looking for uh, equipment to use or sponsors or all of that, you can reach out to them. I had a strategy where I would try to go into the mid range uh, in terms of how many followers they have. You know, if it's uh, someone that's around five to 10,000 followers, you're going to get a big boost from them. Uh, but they're still small enough to where they'll probably even, even work with you for free. You just got to send them your product or whatever, and they'll make a video and have it go out. You can you can really go broad with that. You can reach out to tons of them. It does take work. I mean, you got to sit there and message them and find them and, you know, get a dialogue going, but uh, it can be just an enormous amount of traffic uh, to Amazon. And that will obviously help you move up the ranking organically. 
Uh, so highly, highly recommend uh, finding influencers. Pinterest is the same thing. Uh, there, there's lots of ways to get creative on Pinterest. People go to Pinterest uh, looking for, uh, you know, like workout uh, chart, like what, what is a good workout, you know, and they'll have, Pinterest will have a ton of pins up there of workout plans and stretching plans and all the different things that you, you can look for. So you can, you can get really creative if you do have a fitness product. Uh, you could do a lot of, uh, a lot of Pinterest working with, uh, you know, setting up workout uh, courses for them on Pinterest. And then you can obviously link to your products if it's a product, if they need that product to do that workout. So that's a really, really big one as well. Video, huge. Um, and talking about Amazon as well, now that they have video ads, nothing sells uh, fitness or workout equipment like watching somebody use it. Uh, and video is just is great for that. If you're brand registered, you can use this video in your listing. And if you're brand registered, you can use the video in video ads, which, which we have found really, really convert well. Um, so you, you definitely want to invest in, in high quality, uh, good video. Um, Solozo Connect, we touched on that uh, earlier, but that is a, that's, that is a new program that, that we offer at Solozo where we're facilitating that entire process. Um, essentially, uh, or you can get with our marketing team. We'll help you design the creative that goes in, the creative insert that goes into your product. Uh, at that point, that insert uh, prompts the customer to um, text to get either a coupon or a warranty or whatever your offer is. Um, and so they'll text where Solozo Connect facilitates the entire SMS text process. Uh, where we were able to then capture their um, email and their phone number for you, as well as give them the offering uh, via text that, you, that you've set. So it's a really, really um, great way to be able to remarket directly to your customers um, and, and, do, and be able to promote new products or, or any other thing. So Slows of Connect, huge opportunity, huge opportunity there. This is a a well-developed uh, process on Amazon to, that people have been doing for, for a, a while and off Amazon. Well, no matter where you sell, you can utilize Solozo Connect for product inserts. Uh, but we've really refined it. We've taken all, the, all the, the extra work out of it and made sure that we're in compliance with uh, Amazon's terms of service. So um, highly encourage you to, to guys to take a look, call Chris or I, set up a point with us and we'll, we'll get you uh, set up with Solozo Connect. Um, and the last tip, uh, best, one of the best ways right now to differentiate yourself from everybody else uh, is to, to bundle your products. Um, you know, bundling is a, is a great way. Uh, if you, like I said, with the, in, when I was talking about the yoga mat and the yoga blocks, you could offer those as one product. You know, you, you'll order, order the yoga blocks and the yoga mat at the same time. Um, you can do that. And that's a great way to, uh, just be be different than the competition out there, because one of and I'm one of the things that we didn't touch on uh, earlier. One of the challenges also in this category is there's a lot of commoditized products. Uh, I mean, if it's a if it's a jump rope you're selling, uh, there's not a whole lot of ways you can differentiate yourself with a jump rope. Uh, and so and then there's going to be thousands and thousands of sellers uh, selling jump ropes. So one way, if that's what you're looking to go into, it's hard to compete one-on-one, -on -one, but what you could do is offer a jump rope bundled with something else. And that might be a real good way to differentiate yourself um, in this category. Anything you want to add to that, Chris? No, I mean, you got most of them there. I'm a big fan of video. Mm -hmm. I do like you know investing in video, especially in this category to show how the product works. Um, one thing that I think is pretty neat uh, that people can do is uh, when you launch a product, go to your local gym and just have people try it and see see what they think about it. Um, maybe you can get them to give you some really good feedback uh, and get it, you know, maybe improve something that you didn't even think of. Yeah. Um, so, you know, going, not, not just not just because of influencers, but go to your local gym and just, hey, I'm, I'm thinking about creating this product, I'm offering it on Amazon, could you give me some feedback and maybe just give it to them and, and let them kind of just open up to you. So um, I like that idea. Like, Absolutely. 
you can record a video uh, with somebody locally that is using the product and, and just post it on Facebook, Instagram, social media. I mean, it's pretty clear you need to have a social media plan, plan here uh, for this category because there's going to be a lot of different ways you can drive traffic to Amazon. Mm -hmm. And Amazon loves that. When you send external traffic to Amazon, you're going to rank higher. Your product's going to go up the organic ranking. Uh, Amazon really loves that. So anytime you can drive traffic, whether it be from like Google advertising, I've seen people do that and tested that out. That seems to be pretty nice uh, as far as getting some good ranking. And then external traffic um, as well through social media. Um, those can really help your product improve ranking as well. And then have a good PPC strategy. You just, you bundle all that together. Uh, it's kind of like a foolproof idea. You got things going all at one time, so. That's right. So just to touch on that, because I, I, don't, I don't think a lot of people really grasp what's, what's amazing about the Amazon platform is whether you're, whether you're driving traffic with pay-per-click on Amazon, which is great, or this off traffic, off uh, Amazon traffic that we're, we're talking about as well. But every time somebody buys your product, Amazon moves you up the rankings organically. For, for whatever, however you got to there, whatever keyword you typed in, whatever search term you typed in, uh, the the power of that, this is not like any other place out there where where that happens. And so when you, when you do these like PPC strategies that Chris and I have been talking about and driving traffic, that, that rank, that moving you up the rankings drives organic sales. Um, and that's just the, the, the most, that's the amazing part about being on Amazon is just to get the ability to generate all those organic sales. So if you follow these tips and you follow uh, the, the PPC optimization that, that we've been talking about, you will definitely see um, that, that effect happen where you're generating a lot of those uh, organic sales. All right, let's uh, just real quick, we'll touch on uh, just a few things to watch out for. Um, Let's see, Chris, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you talk, touch on this one. Yeah, heavy competition, $20 and $20 and under products. This is because they're cheap to source and people just list them on Amazon. So there's a lot of opportunity, not a lot of opportunity here to compete because there's, there's a lot of products in this category under $20. So if you got the capital, look for something that's a little bit, uh, cost a little bit more money, 25, 30, a little bit higher or bundle those smaller products together, you know, two pack, three pack, uh, different products together. So look for that. Uh, many products com com commoditized, again, uh, kind of went over that. And then it's hard to differentiate. So, um, you know, find something different that you look into source or a uh, bundle will make you different than your competitor. Um, improve something on, on a product. Like this is all important things to do at the very beginning uh, so that you don't get you don't get stuck with something and, and you have to liquidate it. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, take your time on this. Look for products that are different. Uh, mm -hmm. See if there's something you can make uh, different than what your competitor is doing. Check the reviews of your competitor. See if there's something that's missing that their customers want, and then add that to your product. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And and uh, you know, people kept coming into this uh, into this category. Uh, sometimes the, the, you can be in love with a with a product, uh, or for example, I'm a tennis player. Uh, so, but me looking to come on uh, and sell tennis rackets is gonna, not going to work. There's <laughs> four huge brands that have that entire market capitalized. So I got to make sure I'm looking for uh, ways to 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 do something if I want to be in that category. Maybe I could work on like uh, racket bags or all the ancillary things that you could products that you need uh for for your sport you might find better opportunities and that's one of the main reasons why we why we are, are ha, like to have these webinars is just it's it's a lot about in the in the early stages you can save yourself a lot of hassle if you're able to to pick a smart product um and that's like you know going in, in a ten dollar uh jump rope in on amazon it's commoditized it's cheap everyone's trying to do it as their first product it's just it's there's no margins it's super hard to to compete and um and you could you could find yourself being discouraged even if your product's amazing um so really you really want to make sure that that these are components that you that you have if you if you can differentiate you're going to really really uh, do a lot better uh in the long run 
Um, so real, real quick, we're going to look, we'll open it up for questions. Uh, Chris, why don't you take a look in the, in the chat real quick for yeah. questions. First, while you're looking at those, I'm going to show everyone our, our discount code, promo code that we have for them today. Um, if you're looking to get ready and get started with Solozo and get those advertising, uh, the advertising PPC optimized, uh, reach out to Chris and I if you have questions. Uh, but if you're ready to go, you can go to solozo.com and use this the code SPORTS2020. You're going to get a 14-day free trial and you're going to get 50% off your first month. So great deal, uh, great opportunity for you to get started right now. It's a great time to go ahead and, and start doing this. And we'd love to see you uh, inside Solozo. So either go ahead and get started with that or reach out to Chris or I, uh, and we can get you uh, on a demo to answer more specific questions to you. All right, Chris, what do we got? What kind of First questions do we have? kind of runs into this. Uh, if I sign up today, how long does it take to get set up? Uh, so we'll import your data, it takes a few hours. Uh, you'll be asked to book an onboarding call. That's an onboarding call with our support team. We'll help you get your account set up, go over your ad strategy, uh, get you all familiar with Solozo. And if you do have further questions, you can reach out to the support team or Dustin and I, and we can help you with that. So it doesn't take too long, a couple of hours, and then you'll do your onboarding within 24 hours. Yep. Um, any tips on sourcing my own products for the sports equipment? Uh, you got any tips there? Yeah. Yeah. You're, no, there's a couple. Um, one, if, if you know what you're looking for, Alibaba is a great, great place to go um, find manufacturers. If you haven't been to Alibaba, it's, it's a really, really good resource. And what, what I would recommend is I'd recommend uh, reaching out to a lot of them. Uh, reach out to, to more, definitely don't reach out to just one. Reach out to four or five. Uh, you, you're gonna wanna order samples for sure when you're sourcing this, you're, you're gonna wanna order samples. And one thing to note, if you order samples, that you're, it's gonna seem like it's expensive for the product, but they, they, they definitely overcharge you for the sample. Um, but that's just sort of make sure that you're serious. You're not trying to just, you know, buy the product cheap from them instead of buying it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Um, but they'll always, they'll take that sample cost off of your order. Um, you know, once you make your main order. So, but you, it's definitely worth it to, to, to test that with, with lots of suppliers, um, because the quality can be all over the place and you definitely want to make sure if you have a, a poor quality product, you're going to, the, your customers are going to let you know real quick with some bad reviews. Um, and that can pretty much put the brakes on right there for you. Uh, so I would definitely order samples, definitely check it out. I would also um, make sure I hire an inspection agent. Um, the, you, Cause the, a lot of times what you get as a sample uh, is not the same as what you get in your order. Um, so you got That's just one way to make sure that you're dealing with a really reputable supplier is to, to hire an inspection agent. You know, it can be a couple hundred dollars, but it can be absolutely worth it. Mm -hmm. uh, it can it can save you. So, those are some some big ones in terms of of sourcing. Um, you know, if you're trying to differentiate, you know, you might be looking at making a brand new product where you're going to have the factory will charge you a tooling fee uh, to get it set up to make your product. So, be prepared if you're if you are going to differentiate and make your own product, then they're going to have to build a mold or, or tool their factory up so that they can make your product and that can be a couple thousand dollars sometimes uh, up front as, as a tooling fee. So just be prepared for that if that's the road you're gonna go down. Good stuff. If I want to advertise my exercise bands, can I use P90X as a keyword? Sure. Yeah, you can use it. Sure. You can use every, um, you can use everything. You could put in beach body workouts as a or P90X, insanity. You could anything that people would be typing in. Uh, I'd probably you, put it in my back end. I don't know if I'd put it in my title or bullet point. Yeah, now you you can't put you can't put branded or trademark words in your title, uh, but you can absolutely use them as a keyword in your in your uh, in your pay per click campaigns. For sure. For sure. There's there there's no restriction, and, and I would recommend it. Um, I've had real, real success advertising for uh, famous workout um, programs that are out there that some of my products were associated with uh, or were used in there. So yeah, absolutely. And I would highly, highly recommend it. Uh, plus our tool is going to find those kind of keywords for you uh, anyway in the campaigns. But 
yes for PPC, no for branded or trademarked uh, words in your title or your listing. Uh, and you just yeah. touched on that one. How can I find keywords and get traffic to my listing without spending a fortune? Oh, yeah, optimize your optimize your campaigns. Or just use the search bar on Amazon to find keywords or your auto campaign. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. you're, the search bar trick is great. Going in there and typing in, you know, jump rope, if that's what you're selling. And then it's going to, it's going to be all the other longer tail keywords that are associated. And it's probably ranked based in like order of, you know, a volume in that, in that search list. So you you can take all of those, uh, those keywords, put them in there. And then in terms of not spending a fortune, uh, that's, that's the whole goal of optimizing your pay-per-click campaigns. That there's, there's some keywords that you're just not going to be profitable on. If you want to show for them, it's going to be way too expensive. So getting those, getting those out of there uh, and negating them so you're not spending money on unprofitable keywords is super important. So Lozo automates that for you. Uh, and then making sure that you have the right bid on each keyword so that it's showing enough to drive sales, but, but definitely not bidding so high that it's putting you at a, at a cost that's unsustainable. Last question. Sure. Why are you both wearing Chiefs hat? Oh, uh, well, uh, because they are the Super Bowl champions. Champs. Yeah, world champs. And because it's been a long time. And we, we <laughs> have been bad for years and we finally yep. got a good team. So, uh, yeah, this feels good. This is an exciting time around here. Plus, it's in honor of our sports and fitness category that we definitely had to be wearing our favorite sports team uh, out there. So, if you guys are out there and you're uh, Patriots fans or whatever, and don't be offended by our hat, uh, we even though that even though you've been to the Super Bowl a million times, uh, yeah. we still love you, and we'll still we will still love to see you inside Salazar and talk PPC. Now let us let us enjoy this. It's been a long yeah. time. <laughs> exactly. Yes, we we will definitely enjoy it. Um, anyway, it. thanks, Chris. Yeah, thanks for the time. Um, hopefully, everyone out there uh, learned something today, and we would love to be able to speak with you more individually. Reach out to Chris or I. Uh, like I said, you can book a time with us on the website, and we'll uh, spend time talking about your business and how we can uh, take it to the next level.